So, yeah, I'm going to talk about machine learning and uh, computer science and how it is connected to different medical fields. But let's, uh, let's play a game. Uh, some of you probably saw these slides, uh, then um, don't have the others. What do you see on this picture? You can shout in. Snow? Yeah, there is snow. Is anything else than snow? Wonderful. Horses. Who can see horses? Yeah, great. Imagine asking the same questions from your computer. What is on this picture? It's not an easy question, right? So how many, how many horses do you see? Okay, at least one, right? Four. Yeah, I think like, yeah, four. <laughs> that is, that's it? There is a fifth one as well, right? Okay, yeah, it's not easy, right? Imagine, imagine again asking your computer. Let me ask another question. Do you see the dog? Immediately, right? Why? Because I gave you something, this something is called prior information. Some prior information about the system. If we know what we are looking for, everything becomes much more easy to answer, okay? And uh, my second last question is, what is the question here? Hmm? Oh, yeah. Uh, so in the middle, are they the same or not? You, you sure? Okay, okay. Uh, they are not. One of them is slightly smaller. Which one? Very difficult question again, because the human eye is not really for quantitative analysis, okay? So we cannot really measure uh, just, just 20 meters different distance, what is what. Yeah, uh, they, they are the same, actually. Uh, and the very last is uh, we are going to count cell nuclei, and let's see who is the fastest. I show a picture, and you tell me how many, how many cells you see. Let's say half is, is zero. It's? Okay, I counted nine, doesn't matter. Okay, so for, for a human it's like four seconds, for a computer it's, it's, it's a, a hundred, one over hundred second. Okay, how about here? Good, yeah, ten percent in biology is fine. Uh, uh, yeah, so, so to tell you we have really great uh, microscopes and we can take pictures of many cells even more and at the end you probably don't want to count them anymore right so why did I show you these fancy pictures um, so what I wanted to highlight is a human is imprecise uh, I should see if I have a laser it's probably not but I have a mouse yeah a human is imprecise slow but intelligent, right? So we cannot really measure the size of the box. We are rather slow in calculating, uh, counting things. But you could see the horses. My computer would have very difficult time to see the horses. And whereas the computer is precise and fast. And my research group tries to put these red things together, okay? It's like being precise, fast, and intelligent. Why is it important? Let me show you a um, um, video of a biological experiment. What you see here is so-called microtiter plates. 384 experiments can be done in each of it. And what we were interested at, we switched off genes one by one in a human genome, and we infected cells that were missing one of the genes, and we were interested what is the effect of the cells if we infect them with salmonella uh, bacteria. Okay, so this, this is a so-called human genome wide screen. This was actually uh, the first one uh, we did in Switzerland uh, some, some years ago uh, with microscopy. And we could say what are the genes that, that play active role in the infection of uh, uh, these bacteria, salmonella. So you can imagine the data amount is, is big. It, it was 10 terabytes data what we had to work on. And it's even this time, 10 years uh, later, is, is still a lot of data. That time it was like really amazingly lot. So we had to be precise, fast, and intelligent because no way that a human can one by one check these pictures and say something. Okay, so um, so my research group's name is Biomag and we are working on uh, all these aspects of uh, uh, working with images. First, uh, image quality improvement, image segmentation, tracking, uh, machine learning, phenotyping, so to say what cell is what, 
And finally, I will show you an interesting technology uh, we developed last year about how to isolate single cells from uh, native cultures or native environment. Yeah, so if it comes to correcting pictures, if you look at a picture like this, you see fantastic sea couples, columns, uh, beautiful seaside. Probably your eye doesn't recognize, neither mine, that, that the corner of the image is much darker than the middle, right? If I take my computer, it happens, yeah? So what, ha what turns out is actually the, the corner is three times darker than the middle of the image. Uh, very bad, and the bad, even worse news that it's, it's the same phenomenon there in microscopy as well. So uh, if we see, like, this is a, a mouse kidney, yeast cells, cancer cells, uh, we all see this phenomenon, and unfortunately, this can harm the quantitative analysis of the uh, of the data because we cannot really process these things. We don't find the cells, we can't measure cancer, and so on. So my uh, my group worked out a method called CIDR that actually takes these pictures and corrects them, so make, makes them very flat. The idea I'm not going to talk about the the mathematics much, but but the idea is that we have. Uh, a real picture, we, it goes through the microscope, so it's an imaging system, a sensory system that digitizes it, and then it becomes corrupted because of these uh, optical parts, because of noise and so on. And then we said, if we would have infinite number of these images with objects uniformly distributed, and we could consider either of the pixels, then we should see very similar distribution of the intensities. They only differ because of the distortion. And this is what we calculated, how can we back, back transform it and, and, and uh, make it, like, again, reliable. Unfortunately, we don't have infinite amount of images, so we had to work with a couple of them, and, and then it, a, couple, a few mathematical tricks are needed. But at the end, uh, we, we built this uh, technology decider and uh, it actually is the state of the art at the moment. So, so uh, with basically all known uh, microscopy techniques, it works, uh, including epifluorescence, bright field, and so on and so forth. And we have implementations in, in different programming languages. Okay, so the pictures are flat now. The next point is we would like to process these images, what we have. Uh, what you see here, I'm going to use this picture. This is uh, influenza infected cells. Uh, we published a few years ago where we were uh, actually interested in what are the, the key uh, drugs that can uh, slow down the, the entry of influenza in the cells. So these images usually uh, consist of uh, fluorescent labeled uh, channels like the nucleus, this, uh, the uh, virus particles, the cytoplasm. Oops. And then we do ma three major steps. We detect the cells, we detect their compartments and extract numbers out of them. Uh, and I show you how we do that. So starting from an image, we, end, we, we go to an image where every single cell is detected and every single cell's compartment, like the nucleus, the virus particles, the cytoplasm, and we are almost there. Unfortunately, this is not number yet, so I cannot give it to the doctor that this drug has this and this effect. We need to get out some numbers from here. And what we measure, we measure the individual cell's morphology, like how big, how circular, what is the intensity, what is its texture. So basically from a picture, we, we, we get numbers, it's so-called matrices, okay? And these matrices represent the, the cell population. Uh, it's great, luckily or unluckily, not every single cell is like so nicely distributed. They are often uh, like no labels, like no fluorescence labels, they grow on the top of each other, they touch each other, and this is where my research group is very interested, that can we develop methods that, that actually resolve this very difficult problem of uh, uh, um, like microscopy side effects. And um, I just brought you one or two of uh, the examples. One is when cells are growing on the top of each other, you see here like cell cultures in, uh, like cancer cultures really love to that. Uh, tissue sections often happen that they overlap. And we developed a method, uh, remember I was talking about prior information. Here the prior information was that we know that the cells are circular, and we also know that if two cells are on the top of each other, the very interesting thing happens is that the intensities become brighter. This is not a big uh, discovery, it's just because microscopy is an integrative technology, so it counts how many uh, intensity particles we have um, under a certain area. 
So if we have two cells, then the intensities are doubled. Yeah, so we included that into our method, and you see that now we are capable to really isolate the single cells one by one and say their properties. Um, it also works for tissues. For example, what you see here is cancer tissue of uh, breast cancer uh, uh, sections, and, and we are like able to detect all the cells one by one. And this is what we did in the last 10 years. And all of a sudden, last year, there was a word competition. It's called the Kaggle Data Science Competition. It's uh, well, probably, I can say, it was the, 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 the world championship in computational biology. There were 4,000 teams participating. And the task was that they gave us different uh, microscopy pictures. And on these microscopy pictures, they, they actually asked us to develop one single software that finds each and every single nucleus. And uh, it was good for us. We were working on that for 10 years, so surely we should win this. Uh, we did not. Uh, we were in position 1,000 out of 4,000, which was pretty shitty, to be honest. It, I mean, it was very disappointing. And what, what actually turned out is that most of the groups were using so-called deep learning. This is a new way of machine learning. And it's, a, it's an artificial intelligence uh, direction. Probably you heard that, that now machines can beat the Go champion, this Asian game, or machines can beat the, the chess uh, champion. Now machines can beat the machine who can, who can beat the world champion. Uh, and these are all based on deep learning. So we also started to use deep learning, and we were in the top 100. Let's say it was not that bad now. And then it turned out the key question here is how many data we have to train the machine is really crucial. Like, if you think about self-driving cars, you need to say more and more to the car, then it learns more and more, right? Actually, even Tesla has a, a feedback mechanism. If there is a, an interesting situation, traffic situation, it sends back to the company, and they build it in into the intelligence. So we did not have enough data. And it's very expensive to ask several students to like circulate SAS. So what we did is called image style transfer learning. Image style transfer learning is something that you have a basis and you have an art, and it actually plots that basis with that art. Or probably you saw these pictures before, a German city, three famous paintings, and then as the city was painted by that author. And it's amazing. It's not just color similarity. It's like really the, the, the brush direction and so on. So if you can do that for paintings, why couldn't we artificially create training examples for the machine? And this is what we did. We took a real image and we said, hey, I would like to have a cell here, here, and here, and there, and there, and there. And we created crazy amount of artificial data, and we trained the artificial intelligence with data that was created by another artificial intelligence. And we got the best score in this, uh, uh, um, in this competition. So what you see here is really the method could learn so well the, to segment the cells that, that you barely find mistakes. It's, it's, really, it's really strong. And you see the versatility of the, of the data is pretty, pretty high. So what I wanted to say is that the deep learning is really exciting nowadays. It really revolutionizes the, the, the field. OK, so, but, so I, I was talking about uh, pictures and that we, we got data from pictures. Right? I just made a, a detour that there are very difficult and less difficult questions. But at the end, we have numbers, and very good. So what to do with this large amount of numbers which describes the cells? And for that, we also use machine learning. Uh, there's a project in the lab called Advanced Cell Classifier, where the idea is that we try to combine human knowledge with machine knowledge and, and uh, analyze the, the microscopy picture such that we say how many cancer cells are there, how many normal cells, and so on. So the idea, uh, let me show you, uh, there is um, a cancer marker. It's called KI67. Uh, that actually um, uh, shows proliferation. Proliferation is a way of uh, um, going to cell mitosis. I'm a computer scientist, so just take it as serious as uh, uh, it's necessary. But, but this is these green little dots here. And, and what you see here is a kidney cancer. It, the, the cells are coming from a patient, and we were interested in whether we can find drugs for this particular patient to cure cancer. So what we would like to minimize is the number of proliferating cells that, that, that go to mitosis and also minimize the cell death. We don't want to kill the patient's cells. Okay? So what we do is we feed in uh, several drugs, 
uh, count the number of positive negative cells. We train the machine that this is positive, this is negative, it doesn't express, this is a so-called feeder cell, it's needed, and at the end the machine learns it and say that we have this and this many cancer cells, this and this many non-cancer cells for that particular drug at that particular concentration. Okay, so this um, this is how we use machine learning for phenotyping. And at the moment, what we are working on together with uh, Harvard University is to migrate all what I've shown you to the web. So basically, now uh, this machine learning is very is very expensive. You need really fancy hardware like large computational clusters and so on. But now as the computers are developing, some of it can be really moved to your computer browser. And now we are working on a computer browser based system where you can just trash your Im or throw your images and do everything on your browser and this is what we are currently working on. Okay, so I would like to show you a few applications what we work on. Uh, one is uh, uh, hematological cancer, it's childhood uh, leukemia. We work together in Switzerland, uh, a group uh, in the children's hospital and the idea is can we somehow create strategies for drug treatment of these leukemic patients. So the idea is, is actually pretty brilliant. Um, we take bone marrow um, uh, samples. Um, um, I don't know if you know Hungarian bone marrow, it's joint value. Okay. So we take uh, uh, bone marrow samples, we take leukemic cells, and we put drugs on the bone marrow and put the leukemic cells on the top of it and see how well the bone marrow survives versus how well we can kill the leukemia cells. So for example, this is like a great drug. It actually killed almost all the leukemia cells, but you still have the bone marrow layer. And we are hunting for drugs that can do that. And uh, uh, we developed, again, deep learning methods that from one picture can analyze how many of these and that cell we have for certain concentrations of the same drug. Okay, so the method is really now in clinical use since two, three years. We already treated more than 100 patients uh, based on the uh, uh, picture output and, and, and strategizing what is the, what is the drug. So it's, uh, it's, it's not a diagnostic system, it's a, a diagnostic aid system or something like that. Uh, to help the doctors to, to decide, but, but it's really uh, very heavily used nowadays. Um, the other one what we are very heavily working on is, is solid cancers in my Finnish group. Uh, so the idea is that we have a patient, we take oncological sample from the patient, we create cell models, probably if you are interested you can read about it, it's a hell difficult thing to create a cell culture from, from a patient and then we test different drugs on, uh, on that, those cells and then do imaging again what I said like microscopy pictures, bioinformatics and try to report back what is the best uh, uh, drug candidate for that part particular cancer. Here unfortunately I cannot report so great uh, uh, progress. Uh, we have a couple of patients who were tra treated but not more than 10 uh, so it's still ongoing. And very lastly, and I don't know how well I am with time, but probably I need like three more minutes, uh, is, um, so I would like to show you a technology called Kami. Uh, it's very interesting in this probably because last year I was awarded by the Sender the, uh, how it's called, grant, uh, because of this. Uh, so the technology tries to put together all the uh, all, the, all the things what I've shown you, starting from cell culture or tissue culture, we, we isolate, uh, we microscope all the cells, detect what is what, and then go there with a small uh, CNC machine, and once we detected what is the type of it, we can say that I would like to get a number one, and we cut the single cell out with the laser, and we collect it, and can do molecular analysis uh, on that single cell. So. Uh, to tell you, so like a hairpin is this big, then a cell is like this small, and the cutting is like one micron. Okay, so I can I can write your name with this laser into your hairpin very easily. It's a um, it's a really precise one. And uh, oh, sorry, that's some sort of music in the lab, but but this is how it works. Uh, oh, sorry, I don't know why it flickers, but but this is when real time the machine is cutting. And now we, we really advanced a lot with this technology since last year. Uh, so we started a project called Deep Visual Proteomics together with uh, Matthias Mann and Emma Lundberg. Matthias Mann is, is at the moment the most cited scientist in the world. And uh, um, he's, he's working in proteomics 
and what we what we are building is from a patient we do imaging uh, capturing uh, mass spec technologies and and then clinical knowledge uh, combined with the mass spec and try to treat uh, it's it's actually for melanoma patients um, at the moment and uh, I can tell that now the the paper is coming in the largest journal in the world out very soon so it's it's becoming a very exciting technology and it was uh, it, it was really nice, actually. It was supported by the Zuckerberg Foundation as well as the uh, European Union. So this is what we are currently working on. And very lastly, um, I wanted to show you one video uh, about 3D. So I've shown you imaging, uh, single cell isolation, and all the machine learning. But a very big challenge now is can we do the same in 3D? And we work with uh, Gabor Tomás group uh, in human brain and the question is, can we target a single cell in the human brain, uh, identify it, and pick it out? And what you see here is, is om it looks almost like a spaghetti. It's very, it's very difficult to work on a human brain. We find a, a particular cell, we control the pipe there, and we need to be precise. The, so the cell is very small, and <clears throat> once it's there, it sucks in, and, uh, and, and then we can measure uh, certain properties like electrophysiology or, or molecular conduct. And what you see here, the machine was not touched by anything. So the, it selected automatically a cell, controlled the pipette there, and, and made the connection, and then we can start measuring or isolating the single cell. And to tell you, it's, again, it's not easy. So, so uh, we have two coordinate systems, like one the microscope, one the, uh, the robot, it, there are cells in the way, so if we hit another cell, we need to hijack. It, the whole stuff is moving around, and uh, 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 we need to like track it real time and so on. So, so it's a, it's a difficult process, but uh, uh, now we we have the working system. If you want to read a little more what we are doing, uh, I can send you. We have a few review papers recently published. Uh, in uh, screening, data analysis, machine learning, and also 3D technologies. And with that, I would like to thank to my, my Finnish group, my Hungarian group, my collaborators, and those who give money to burn. And uh, thank you very much for your attention.